Welcome back to the show, Your Real Estate Today. Paul Jamison here. Happy to be spending Saturday afternoon with you. I'm the owner of the Jamison family of companies. That's Jamison Realty, Jamison Property Management, Jamison Property Investments. This show is about real estate, anything having to do with your home, around your home, about your home, or, and in your home. The value of your home, the investment of your home or rental home, the tenants in your home. But today also, things that crawl around your home. So we're going to talk about that too. Marty and Sam Ivy with Ivy Exterminating are here. Hey, guys. Hey, hey, hey. Good to see you, Paul. Good to see y'all. If you all want to also check us out on the run, if you go to YouTube, to the Jameson Realty YouTube channel, and that's Jameson with an I, you can also hear multiple shows and see us making funny gestures at each other. And sometimes when I forget to stop the recording, things tend to happen. So anyway, uh, Jameson Realty Channel on YouTube. You can also go to the WBT website under the shows tab. And there's a ton of shows there. You can catch up on your favorite episodes or just binge listen until you can't stand it. Okay. All right. So. One quick thing before we jump into spiders, which I would like to do, is talk a little bit about landlords. So guess what? This may be a surprise to you, Marty and Sam, but a, a landlord and being a landlord is not a charity. You actually are a landlord for what? rocket science reason to collect rent <laughs> on time. Yay. And if you want to be a charity, you can be. That is certainly your choice in America. You can be a charity if you choose to be. But most landlords have rental property to collect rent. So, I'm about to tell if you're a tenant something very unpopular, but sorry, this is the way it should be. Guess what, landlords or upcoming landlords? Every year, you should raise the rent. <gasps> raise the rent? The tenant's going to move out. Well, let's think about that for a moment. Tell me that on an annual basis, fellow landlords, that your expenses go down. So from year to year as a landlord, do your property taxes go down? Does your insurance go down? Does the cost of maintenance items go down? Hmm. I bet. Nada. So your costs are going up. Also, rental rates in the past year have gone up staggeringly, like 11%. That's a lot. It doesn't mean you have to raise your rent 11%, but they're gone up a lot. Now, let's think about the math for a minute. Let's say, for example, you decide to raise your rent as my phone rings. See, there's the bell. Let's say you decide to raise your rent by $25 a month. $25 a month equates to $300 a year. How much does it cost to rent a U-Haul truck for the day? and load your stuff and move it. Hmm. I'm betting it cost to move a little more than $300. Now, now Marty, I know when you moved, it cost you 350, right? Is that right? Well, probably or yeah. less. That's right. Cause he, cause he just, he just drug it all there. Yeah, I did. 
put it on the back of my scooter and pulled it in the wagon. <laughs> One pickup truck load. He burnt the rest. That's the smart way to do it. But no one's going to move for that small of amount of money if they do the math. Because if they're going to move over that, they were going to move anyway. Moving is expensive. So to even a small correction in the rent is not going to discourage someone from moving out. Your costs go up. It should be expected that every year your rate goes up. If you're in an apartment building, oh, I guarantee you they're going to raise the rent on you every year. Don't even question that. So if you're in the investment business and your costs go up, expect to raise your rent. I, I'm sure that people will think twice before they move because moving is expensive. Oh, and it's kind of a hassle. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, you should raise your rent because in this market, vacancy rate and finding another place is extremely difficult. And this is an investment and it needed to be treated as such. Okay. All right. I'm not going to talk any more about that. Now, next, spiders. Now, why in the world, you're supposed to ask me, would I want to talk about spiders? Well, Glad you asked that, Marty and Sam, because there's spiders everywhere right now. Why? Well, we've had an abundance of uh, conducive weather for them this year. Um, a lot of times in the, when we have a lot hot, humid weather, it creates a lot of food source for the spiders to live on. Um, you've got more people spending more time on their hardscapes on the exterior there's a lot of reflective lighting outside a lot of landscape light which attracts the spiders the spiders are after eating other insects uh when a spider builds builds a web he's building a web to entrap other insects so he's got a food source that he can serve this Spiders have extremely long legs. Um, most insects, you eliminate them when you apply insecticides because they go through some, go through a grooming process where they lick their feet or basically groom themselves. You don't get that with a spider uh, and, and there's not enough pesticide left on a spider web a lot of times to get the spider to kill him. The key to spider control is good sanitation is, is to keep uh, good sanitation in around your house people that have a lot of harboring areas in their house or what what you see a lot of hoarding now where people are stocking a lot of stuff. These are great environments for spiders to live and thrive on. Um, if you see in our industry and um, uh, we try to uh, discourage people from, from doing this to control spiders this time of year, naturally you want to constantly disrupt the webs. Uh, that's one of the things that we do as part of our services. We take these Websters and keep these webs uh, knocked down and removed. Uh, just knocking them down always uh, doesn't eliminate the spider infestation. What happens is, is if you don't get a large portion of that web knocked off, the spider will actually come back. And Welcome back to Show Your Real Estate Today. Hey, it's Paul Jamison, your host. We're having a great day talking about your real estate. So happy Saturday to you and happy Saturday afternoon. And thanks for hanging with us today. I'm here with Marty and Sam Ivey with Ivy Exterminating. And we're also available on the YouTube channel, Jamison Realty. And we're also available through the WBT website. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. I'm the owner of the Jamison Companies. That's Realty, Property Management, and Property Investments. And we're talking with Marty and Sam about your home. Now, um, before the break, I wanted to share uh, with you kind of the comments we were kind of doing offline, which is um, I went and looked at a house. It's about a $600,000 house, guys. Beautiful. Hardwood floors throughout the whole first floor with the exception of like the screen porch and things. And I could see... And you could see in the pictures, there was a funny reflection. Then when you get actually at the house and you look down, all the pieces of wood were cupped in that for on the first floor. Every piece of hardwood was cupped. You roll your hand across it 
it was like rolling your hand across a washboard. That's not well. Good. You know, Paul, we see that a lot. Um, sometimes it's an insulation issue. They, if, especially if it's on new housing, it can be an insulation issue. They didn't put the hardwoods in the house to let it acclimate to the environment, and um, they they draw moisture in in transit. Sometimes in the warehouse, they'll draw moisture, and a lot of times they want to put them in the house and let them sit there for three or four days, sometimes or longer, to let the the uh, air system in the house dehumidify the wood to, to get it down to what they call a living uh, area of the wood, even though the wood's not le living, that's why they refer to it as a lot of times, the hardwood floor installers. Sometimes they can say it's your underlayment, it meaning it's your substructure of how the hardwoods were installed. Uh, you know, there's a certain chemistry to installing hardwoods and sometimes due to the design of the hardwoods, that chemistry is not, not followed. And installation of the hardwoods uh, in direction running parallel with the floor system some, sometimes caused them to cut also. Oh, wow. Uh, the, the main reason that hardwood cups are is due to moisture in a crawl space. Uh, uh, and when that occurs, sometimes a homeowner may get lucky if they control that moisture in a crawl space, they may get lucky and flatten those floors back out that only happens about 35 percent of 35 percent of the time most times when that wood is cut it, it is hard to get it back to its original state uh, if your hardwoods are cupping in the summer and lying back out flat in the winter you've got a pretty good ch chance of uh, leveling those hardwood floors back out it's, uh, it's this moisture in the crawl space is a very much of a concern, uh, not only just from livable air inside the house, at least 40% of the air you're breathing inside the house, it comes from the crawl space, uh, which can affect, have health related issues inside the house, especially if you're asthmatic or have allergies. Um, the other things that are factored in is, is when you're having air duct sweat in the crawl space, those that wood will absorb it in the crawl space and cause the hardwood floors to cut. The best way to get control of that or get your hands around that is to at minimum have 100% vapor barrier in the crawl space, six mil or greater, uh, shut your, permanently shut your foundation vents and dehumidify that air in the crawl space. And another, I, I say probably in another three years, there'll be no more open air crawl spaces built. You're near, you'll see no more foundation vents on new housing. It's just energy is going to become so expensive and open air crawl space are not energy efficient. And they, uh, they're just very problematic. Uh, when you have a change of seasons, you have a change of seasons in the crawl space. Uh, and it's a fascinating to see it. I've been looking at it since I was a child. It's fascinating to see it and homes become very predictable. They swell up in the summer and they uh, shrink up in the winter. And that's the reason people during change of season so so much of uh, a change inside their homes. Yeah. I tell you, Marty, I don't think people really understand um, the the sensitivity to your body around those things as you expressed before, and also the fact that they need to have somebody go under there on a Absolutely. regular basis. How would you, just just for the folks that are listening? What are kind of uh, good slash bad moisture levels and how often should somebody be in that space? Well, it's, it's, it would be imperative, we think, to have somebody look at that space at least once a year. If you're having them look at it on an annual basis, different times of the year would be helpful because if the same people are looking at it and they're mapping the crawl space, it gives us an opportunity to kind of predict how the change of seasons are affecting the house looking at the house at least once a year, especially late summer is optimum for the simple reason is that that's when the crawl space is typically going to be at its worst. Uh, it's something that uh, this time of year, right now, a lot of crawl spaces are a train wreck because we've had a lot of hot, humid air uh, in a crawl space, especially if you're keeping inside the house cool. When I say cool, 60, 65 to 72 degrees, uh, 
uh, it's going to cause havoc in the crawl space a lot of times. Moisture levels in the crawl space, you'd like them below 20%. At 18%, uh, fungal growth or microbial growth can occur. So optimum what you would really like it, you would like it in the in, in around the 14% or lower range uh, is what you optimally would like. And the amazing thing about it, if you're controlling that humidity in the crawl space, the inside livable area of the house is going to be a lot more comfortable. Yeah, that's true. So I, I don't mind saying that you just installed in my house a um, dehumidifier. Right. And this sucker is not the ones from Lowe's that you empty the bottom tray. No. No, you need a you need a reliable dehumidifier, and those that are those that a lot of times that you buy in these service centers uh, are not reliable, and they are typically can be made out of a plastic that is is flammable. And we've seen actually a couple houses that have had some issues with uh, fire because of these um, dehumidifiers that has been purchased in the service center. Yeah, they're not made to take what those what those uh no you bad have bad boy you have under my house i mean i don't know how many men how many men sammy did it take for you to get that thing in with yeah that thing's heavy some Ooh. some of the, if you've got a if you've got a lot of cubic square feet you've got a high crawl space so you've got a lot of cubic square feet in your crawl space you've got a lot of cubic square feet in the in your crawl space it takes a lot to one to get that environment under control and it takes a lot to maintain control once it gets in control and maintained, it can balance out and level out. But you need something that can keep up with, you've got a large cubic feet, you need a, a dehumidifier that can handle that volume. Uh, and most of them uh, that you see out here in the marketplace cannot have that unless they're specifically designed for crawl spaces. Yeah, you know, you know what's interesting is there is, as you said earlier, there's a huge correlation between moisture, certainly in health, and and pests. Absolutely. I mean, you know, moisture or water is a source of life, all life. Yeah. And uh, you, everything in the food chain does it, needs it. And well, once you know, that ball starts rolling, it constantly gets larger and larger. And at some stage, it gets out of control. And it's really interesting to watch it. You can, we'll look at crawl spaces sometimes once or twice a year, and you can almost predict that in another six months, two years, this crawl space is going to be out of control. And yeah, well, it's you know, gonna I, rain in there. I, I had, um, I had a house one time that I turned a blind eye to, and it got out of control in about eight months. Wow. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's something that's very interesting to watch and see. You know, it, it, you get you said something to me, and we're just coming up on break. But you'd said something to me once when the bee is swarming around you, and you've got a nice cool drink sitting there. It's not after you; it's after the water on your drink. Absolutely, honey bees. You know, we get a lot of calls with honey bees, especially in the uh, summertime when these people have these solar colors on covers on their pools. Uh, and they say these bees are swarming. What the bees are doing is they're using that solar cover to rest on while they get them a drink. I like it. I like it. Just don't sting me. All right. More to come with Marty and Sam Ivy. We're going to be talking, I think, about roaches, right? Or palmetto bugs when we come back to show your real estate today here on News Talk 1110 WBT. Back, friends, to the show your real estate today. Paul Jamison, your host here with Marty and Sam Ivy with Ivy Exterminating. And of course, we're a part of the Jamison family of companies, realty. For buyers and sellers, property management, if you're an individual investor, or property investments. If you're interested in investing in real estate, we have a group, a team, and a book that you can uh, get from us called Opportunity is Knocking. Uh, you can find that on Amazon Prime or go to Jameson Realty, Paul Jameson. I just go to pauljameson.com or myjamesonhomes.com, and you can order a signed copy same prices on Amazon Prime. All right, so um, at the break, um, I hinted that we're going to talk about palmetto creatures, um, of which 
seems to be um, the more south you go, the larger they become. Is that because we cook with a little more grease farther south? That's right. It's all that southern love and, and fried chicken. <laughs> I thought when prices went out, you know, maybe they'd lose a little weight. That's right. Yeah, the, the palmetto bugs or water bugs, as some people call them, it's, it's really just American roach. They're very common to our area. And right now we're getting a bunch of phone calls from first time customers who are complaining about them showing up in their houses and what to do. And, you know, before the break, we discussed moisture problems in the crawl space and uh, the, the crawl space, if you have bad moisture problems in there, can contribute to uh, higher pest populations in the crawl space too. And like all insects, once the pest population gets large enough, they're going to move out and seek out other areas to uh, live in, to find food and water and shelter and kind of create a family and, and spread, spread their wings, so to speak. And so if you've got bad conditions in your crawl space, if you've got a lot of stored items that create conducive conditions for these insects in your crawl space, they're eventually gonna make their way up into um, the, the house. You know, one of the common things we hear from customers is they're, the roaches or water bugs are living in their HVAC lines. And they say, we see them running into the, the registers. And they're not living in the lines. Those HVAC lines are really producing conditioned air, which has no humidity to it. And that is not a suitable environment. It'll dry out their exoskeletons and they won't be able to survive. What they typically do, they might run in there and hide and then come right back out. Or if your floor register, if their floor registers on the first floor, uh, sometimes those roaches are coming up from the crawl space because the HVAC line has slipped off of the, the floor register boot. And hmm. you need to have an HVAC company come out and retighten those lines on that boot and seal those gaps and cracks up around where that line's meeting that floor register so you kind of prevent them from coming up into the house. The other big kind of entry point this time of year as we move into the fall, kind of like Marty said earlier, is people like leaving their doors and windows open uh, at night and in the mornings as we get these cooler temperatures. And it's an instant entry point for all these uh, water bugs and palmetto bugs to, to move in. So you want to keep your screens uh, shut, check to make sure you don't have any gaps or cracks around your windows this time of year. Uh, also, this time of year, they're going to come in through the, uh, through the events uh, and roof lines around the house. So you want to check to make sure tree branches are cut back away from the houses. Um, because they will drop out of there and they'll kind of do a glide flight and they'll find these entry points around the house where maybe a soffit vent has come loose or um, the ridge vent uh, has got a crack in the screen or something like that. So it really takes an, an expert to come out and be able to identify the key problem areas around and in your house where these entry points are gonna be so that we can properly address them uh, we go up into the attic, uh, we can spray in the attic in those points where they're going to be likely to come in, especially if you've got dormer windows uh, on the attic. A lot of times there's not a great seal around them, so we'll make sure we get a chemical around them. Uh, we'll put glue boards in there to help prevent them from coming out and bait the attic as well too with a granular um, that, that will take care of them and knock them out. Um, and then in the crawl space, we can go in the crawl space and do some treatment in there as well, too, uh, to make sure we get a service that you're happy, happy with. Now, now, I want to make sure we're on the, on the palmetto bug, a.k.a. what you call them, American roach or something? Yeah. Um, is there another kind of roach that's like smaller, looks like a pill, that doesn't get <laughs> big like the other big ones? Well, they all go through multiple stages in their life development. Um, and so they all will have a nymph stage where they are very tiny. But like we said, they live down here in the south and they eat well. 
And uh, so they, they get jacked up on that southern, southern love and get them steroids going on. And you can saddle one and ride it down to the rodeo. Yeah, well, my neighbor's a vegetarian, so I guess they're all coming over my way for some better vittles because they're big over there. Thank goodness you guys are spraying and keeping them out of the house because, man, oh, man, I, I one knocked on the door the other day trying to get in and and uh, sure he wasn't rang the doorbell. He was so big. <laughs> but, dang, on, man. All right, one more quick thing um, before we go. I want to talk just briefly, uh, you know, this, this is fall time will be coming soon, which means leaves will be uh, starting to change and come down. And, and you, uh, Sam and Marty talk about this every year. And that is the, the vegetation around your house, do not blow the wasted vegetation around the perimeter of the house. Right? That is, that is correct. It's not only it is, it is a contributing factor to poor uh, air quality inside the house because your foundation vents will pick the uh, decomposition of those leaves up and pull it inside your house but it is also very, very conducive to a multitude of insects and wildlife that will inhibit those areas. The problem that you get into is, is when those, that organic material starts to degrade, it creates heat. And uh, that heat causes, help, causes that material to break down, which is a great habitat for wildlife to nest in. It's also an excellent uh, food source and habitat for insects to live and thrive in. And it kind of, it just, if you're showing your house and you're interested in selling, you know, and you want to put forth a good impression, getting that stuff away from the house and, you know, it puts out, Marty, what you said was, was key, odor. It puts out yeah. an odor. Absolutely. You, you, you know, don't some want people, that odor in your house. Some people think orange is the new black and decaying leaves is not the new mulch. <laughs> Well, I can just tell you that smells inside of a house make a huge difference. So oh. right now, I just want to say, if you, are, if you are someone who has put off getting into the crawl space, these are the times where um, you can really get Marty and Sam into the house and, if, and have them look up, around, and back. I'm working with them with mosquito treatment. They have the termite bond on my house. They've put a dehumidifier in because I want to protect my home. And so if they want to get in touch with you guys, how do they do it? They can give us a call, 704-334-1616 or bugivy.com. Yeah. I'm telling you, this is a big thing, especially the air quality in your home and protecting it from termites. I keep telling people, my sister lives in Chicago and I'm talking about you know, radon and termites. And she's like, well, you know, that's not really a big thing around here. It's a big thing here. It might not be in Chicago. I mean, there you need other kinds of defense, but here it's a big deal, right? It is a huge deal. I would imagine radon would be a big deal in Chicago, but maybe not. But, yeah, it uh, is. but er every, termites every aren't. Every community has their insect issues, and, and when you're in the South, not only are you in the Bible Belt, but you're in the insect belt also. 704-334-1616 or bugivy.com. And if you want to reach us, you want to do some real estate, investment, selling, buying, we're here, 846-DUNN, 846-3663, or on the web at myjamisonhomes.com. God bless. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next Saturday to show your real estate today on Newstalk 1110-993-WBT.